Hi, Tenfold Jui here from the West Trend. Please help me. Below represents a reflex arc. So, what is the difference between a reflex arc and a reflex action? Because that's a question they love to ask in an exam. Okay, a reflex arc is this path that the stimulus is going to travel. All right, so the stimulus is converted to an impulse and the impulse, sorry, travels along this path. That path is your reflex arc, okay? And the reflex arc will result in a reflex action. So in this case, the reflex arc, this person sticks their finger into a nail, <coughs> The sensory neurons, uh, at least the receptors here, okay, will perceive that stimulus, because this is a stimulus, all right? And the stimulus converted to an impulse, and now the impulse, which is the language of the brain, the impulse travels along the A is the sensory neuron, all right? And then it goes, because you know this is the sensory neuron because it's unipolar, Right, and then it goes, zoops, and look at this little gap here. That little gap, oh, here we, it, it's enlarged, is the synapse. The neurons never touch. The reason for that is if they did touch, you would have the impulse going backwards and forwards, and you'd end up shaking like this. Okay, you don't want that. So you've got neurotransmitters that take the impulse and they carry it over like, like little canoes. If you can imagine little canoes. So you've got the end of the one neuron, and you've got the end of the other neuron sitting here, and there's this gap in between. That's the synapse. And imagine your, your neurotransmitters have, are like little canoes. So the impulse gets onto the canoe, and the little neurotransmitters take it across the gap, the synaptic gap, to the other side. And then it can carry on. It makes sure that that impulse travels in the same direction. So it goes in one direction. It never comes back. Okay, so... We've then got our synapse, and this, this here is going to be our interneuron. Uh, neuron. You can also call this a connector neuron. Now, people, that makes sense because inter, inter means between. And so interneuron means it's between the two neurons, okay? The, the, the sensory and the motor neuron. And a connector neuron, well, connects. So both terms are correct. It just depends on what your teacher prefers and what they learnt when they were studying and what they teach you. All right, so you have your interneuron. That's in between here. This is your grey matter. That's your white matter. And then that impulse goes bitty, 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 bitty <coughs> here through the motor neuron. And the motor neuron is the one that makes you move. So remember, M for motor, M for move. And D is your muscle. And your muscle is actually your effector. So the path from a receptor, receptors converted to an impulse. The impulse travels along the sensory neuron over a synapse to the connector neuron or interneuron. Another synapse to the motor neuron. And the motor neuron then connects into the muscle or the effector. Something else, remember that your effector can also be a gland. Doesn't have to be a muscle, but in this case it is, but it can also be a gland. All right, let's look at our questions. Explain the purpose of a reflex action. Oh, people, please. And this, this is, what have I done here? This is a, such a, this is ridiculous actually that they would ask this. Oh man, let me just get, you see, these things happen to test us. Okay, a reflex action allows body to respond very quickly to a harmful stimulus, okay, to protect against injury. I mean, can you imagine? You, there's a hot plate, okay? And you put your finger on the hot plate. And you know, you've got to wait for the impulses to go to the brain. The brain says, oh, this is hot. Hmm, very hot. Okay, let me now take my finger off the hot plate. And you've got no more fingers left because you've roasted everything else off. 
That's what this does. It protects your body. So it just short circuits at the spine. Your brain gets the message eventually because you feel the pain. But you know what? It just makes that hand move away so that the burn is only going to be a little bit. <clears throat> or in this case, you're only going to stick your finger in a little bit of the nail and not the whole nail. Okay, give the letter and name of the part that conducts nerve impulses from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. That was your connector neuron, which is B. So B, interneuron, or connector neuron. Okay, can you hear what I'm doing? I'm splitting the words up, not because I'm an idiot, but because I'm trying to help you to remember how to spell things. Okay, response to the stimulus. Now let's have a look here. Which letter responded? It was D, the muscle or the effector. So D, which is the muscle. And we can also call the muscle the effector. All right, it's what's going to be affected. Give two reasons why synapses are important in a reflex arc. Okay, first of all, number one, what do synapses do? They ensure the stimulus, uh, what am I doing stimulus? The impulse travels in only one direction. Okay, something else that's very interesting is that what a synapse does is it can transmit an impulse to many neurons. So it's like a, a, like a little roadway. All right, it can just sort of split it up. So it comes in in one and it can then divide into two. I'm going to give you an, a, another uh, um, reason that they're important is that they can also can speed up or slow down or block an impulse. You've heard about blockers, <coughs> pain blockers. That's exactly what a pain blocker does. It affects that interneuron. I mean the synapse. It says, okay, synapse, you know what? Pain's, pain's going to be blocked. It's not going to be allowed through. Okay, um, something else is that your synapses, um, just while we're looking at our next question here, your, your synapses can also filter out insignificant, oh, hang on, let's put, let me write it in here. Filter out in significant uh, um, blah, 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 impulses. I don't know what's wrong with me. I keep wanting to write stimuli. Okay, it, it, what it deems is insignificant. All right, one neuron has an average of 2,500 synapses in the body of, an, uh, of a newborn baby, increasing to 15,000 in a three-year-old. Wow. <clears throat> it says calculate the percentage increase Okay, so increase in the synapse in children from birth to the age of three and show all workings. People, this is ridiculous. So what you're going to say is here, you've got your three-year-old. Okay, they've got 15,000 synapses. You've got your newborn. Okay, newborn has, what was it, 2,500. Okay, so now we're going to get the difference because you want to know the percentage increase. Difference, uh, little, 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 let's just see here. Okay, there we go, 2,500. I mean, you don't need a calculator for this. Do it in your heads. You're going to exercise that brain. Okay, now, we want to know the percentage increase. So we say this, 12,500, which is what the difference was. Let's just move this page up a little bit. Okay, divided by 2,500, which is what the little newborn Baba was times 100, and that is equal to, now look here, dish, 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 25 goes into 125, four times into 100, plus one is five times, times 100 is 500%. Again, you don't need a calculator. That is like mindless, uh, um, basic arithmetic. A two-year-old can do, a three-year-old could do this. So people, Try and do as much as you can in your heads so you don't have to worry about those 
calculators are nonsense. Okay, you don't have time for all this other stuff. Alrighty, uh, and I think that was it. Alright.